United we start, fighting for freedom, a group discussion of activists, bloggers, authors and other leaders in the independent media to inform and educate listeners on various topics. Join us the second Saturday of a month, uh, 10 to 12 a.m. Pacific time, 18 to 20 hours GMT. Hi, this is Detlef, uh, Wake News Radio, Wake News TV here from Switzerland. I'm Today's producer here in our fabulous first show of our United We Start initiative, uh, United We Start roundtable discussion. It's our first broadcast. Yeah, and I'm welcoming um, my friends, Alan from Ireland. Alan, good are you there? Good, yeah, good evening, Detlev. How are you? I'm fine. I uh, hope you are. Uh, then Michael from Switzerland. Michael, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. Yeah, great to have you. And Matt from the U.S. Hi, Matt. How are you? Morning, Detlef. Morning, everyone. Glad to be here with all of you. Yeah. So you've uh, heard somebody said good evening, and uh, Matt said good <laughs> evening. So we do have a certain time um, difference here. Um, and that's why we uh, chose this particular time to broadcast our worldwide uh, roundtable. Yeah, I'm um, um, in charge of production today. Uh, so, you know, maybe one or the other don't know you yet. So I would kindly ask you to uh, present yourselves. Um, maybe we start with Ellen again. Ellen, can you uh, say a few words to yourselves uh, and the website and, and what you're doing? Yeah, no problem, Detlev. Right, um, myself, Alan James, I'm one part of a, a duo. Uh, my uh, my co-host is Stephen George, and we run a internet radio show called Open Your Mind Radio, which is broadcast live every Sunday from 7 GMT, 7 p.m. GMT to 9 p.m. GMT every Sunday, and we cover all aspects of everything that's going on around us. And obviously, if people want to go over to our website they can visit us at www.oamradio.com or if you go off to facebook just type in oam radio and you'll find us there yeah and, and another thing which is also fabulous um, you have uh, uh, made a lot of effort to get our website on uh, the united we start dot org uh, website so you're also doing uh, tech stuff right can you explain that yeah, that's right. Well, basically, well, the three of us worked on the, the website. I do the, the web design, and um, the three of us worked on the content, or more so you and Matt working on the content. And then the three of us thrown in ideas as to what way the website should be designed. So um, a bit of tech support. At OIM Radio, we also stream our own radio show, as does Detlev, as does Matt. Um, capable, we're all producers, and we can all produce our own radio shows. Um, and basically, this is just a a collection of radio hosts um, to talk about basically everything that's gone on in the world. Again, we're going to be doing this and we plan to do this on a monthly basis. Uh, once, once a month we'll get together, we'll have ourselves on and we'll have different guests coming on. And we're just basically going to be a round table where we're going to throw out ideas to each other. We're going to talk about things that maybe I something I might have not have heard about that Detlev might know or Matt might know or whatever. And we're going to throw it out there and we're going to bounce ideas. And the whole idea is there's so much going on that we just don't know everything. And by having an international round table and getting guests on the show, it just means that we can all share this information. And instead of having, you know, people all around the world and not knowing what's going on, we're going to have a little community online here on the show. And we're all going to share information. That's the plan of attack. Well, well said. Okay, then we pass on to Michael. Michael, can you explain what um, what you do and who you are? And uh, well, he's working also for and with uh, Wake News uh, Radio and Wake News TV. Uh, Michael, it's your turn. Well, I host a show every uh, once a month, every uh, Tuesday uh, at the end of the month, uh, 
It's called uh, Was There Something in the German translation? Was there something? War da was in German? But uh, there I talk about all different issues like um, the occult brotherhoods, the brotherhoods of the shadow, and uh, how these all events that take place today are interconnected and interwoven with uh, with the um, with an agenda from evil forces and from non-physical forces. I talk always about the three shadows and the three curtains. The first uh, curtain is uh, basically the, the the curtain for the secret uh, uh, for the CIA and these uh, organizations for the secret services. Then the second curtain is the secret societies. And the third curtain is the uh, non-physical uh, entities which are there and they have their own agenda. And I try to uh, find the connections, what goes on in this uh, physical world as sort of like a mirror which goes on behind these three curtains. So, <clears throat> and um, yeah, so I connect uh, the events that take place in daily life and I, I draw the conclusions uh, to these th three different levels. Yeah, thanks, Michael. And, and you can reach Michael by just um, emailing him to michael at wakenews.net. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, Matt, um, it's your yeah. turn. Yeah. Well, thanks, Detlef. My name's Matt Navarro. I've been an internet activist for over 25 years now. I had a website called Death to the New World Order, which was the um, the precursor to Matt Drudge and Infowars type websites. It was rated in the top 10% or top 5% of websites at the time. Uh, and then in 2009, I joined up with unitedwestrike.com, uh, was a producer, founder uh, there. My radio show is uh, the New World Order Report, where I expose um, the New World Order and find ways to keep you and your family healthy in these uh, dangerous times and uh, now here I'm joining up with uh, Detlef and the others to so, um, continue that work that we did with unitedwestrike.com and the idea, my this is my idea, is, is that we educate folks and like Alan was saying, you know, share information so that you and your family can make better decisions in your life on how to resist tyranny and then you can share that information with others so that they can resist tyranny. We're waking up. The planet is waking up to the fact that uh, they're being controlled by uh, globalist forces. And I think now is the time in, in humanity's history that if we don't move forward in resisting this and being active in uh, gaining our freedoms back, then we fall back. We will fall into utter tyranny in, in the globalist um mindset or in the globalist control and uh so we have to continue this work and i think we're making a difference and i hope you can too yeah well thanks matt uh, and uh, just a few words to myself um or about myself uh, i'm uh, here um, producing from switzerland so i'm based in switzerland i'm german as a matter of fact um, i do speak a little english so that's why i'm part of the group Right, <laughs> and I do have my German-speaking shows here in uh, uh, at Wake News Radio, which is an internet radio twice a week uh, for an hour, and um, also producing uh, for uh, TV purposes and videos uh, on our Wake News TV channel. So we are also trying to get our friends, our uh, co-people, if you want to. Uh, from uh, the Europe, from Europe, in German speaking, into uh, the new way how to deal with the globalists who are <laughs> tyrannizing us since quite some time. So uh, yeah, and I'm part uh, of this uh, um, initiative here from the very beginning, and I also used to work uh, with the guys on UnitedWeStrike.com from the very beginning. But we. Um, we uh, let's say we changed now to United We Start, so United We Strike is uh, over now. United We Start because we have to look forward, right? Is that correct? 
Indeed. That's correct. And uh, I'd just like to add, Detlev, you're doing the um, all the work tonight. You're doing the hosting of the show. So a big thank you for doing that. And uh, well done on all the work you're doing with Wake News as well. And it was um, it, it was time for a change, I suppose. And and that's what we did. We've we've made a change from you know that we strike to you know that we start. And as Matt, I just uh, you know uh, agree with Matt on the fact that people are beginning to wake up. The energies on the planet are changing. And um, so many people are beginning to realize what's going on and ask questions. We're seeing an awful lot of that now. And um, this is just another step to get international people together in one room, one virtual room, and share information and, and put it out there. And uh, again, thanks, Detlev, for you doing the hosting. And, and again, uh, uh, Michael, I'm not familiar with from Michael's background, so I'm learning as Michael's on the show tonight. I didn't know Michael did his own show, so sorry I didn't mention you, Michael, there. I wasn't aware that you hosted your own show there, but there you go. That's part of the learning. Well, that's yeah, no hey. problem. <laughs> we, lo- we learn from each other. That's wonderful, actually. Yeah, I just wanted to mention for our audience at 11.30 Pacific time, we were hoping uh, to be able to hook up with Sheriff Richard Mack from Arizona. He's running for Congress now, and I thought it would be a, uh, gr- he would be a great guest um, to have on the show because he's been a warrior for freedom and liberty here in America, and I think uh, sharing his views with our international audience would be a great start to our programming. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, very, very interesting and very, very positive. And uh, this is also a plan. We, we want to invite um, people who are coming onto our show, right, on our, onto our roundtable discussion show, uh, so we can share even more information from many other participants. So everybody who's listening who wants to join us in discussion, you, you can send us an email to uws at wakenews.net that's our uh, uh, email Um, that comes directly to me so I can get in touch with you so just don't hesitate just go forward if you have to tell a message Uh and also can I add there that left to just let people know who are listening at the moment that if they want to interact with us and ask questions they can go along to the website you know that we start the org and go into the chat room you don't have to type a password you can just go in and type in the name and select on the button guest and you'll be able to log into the chat room and be part of the uh, the chat um, and the conversations yeah, that's very, very important. And also we will have rebroadcasting uh, after each show. So if you miss something during the live event, uh, you can still listen to it uh, after the show. And we will also have videos available from the show um, after we have finished it. Okay, so why don't we get started? Um, Alan, why don't you pick up the pieces and... Uh, and start with uh, with a matter which is very important uh, in your mind. Okay, well, I, I don't know whether you guys have heard. We had um, Thomas Williams on our show, um, and Thomas has some great information. He's a spokesman for a group called the Foundation. It's a long story, but basically, what was announced last week was that um, America was declared a sovereign nation, which means all contracts from the Crown are null and void. Um, The paperwork, the declaration was given to Donald Trump. It was given to him last Saturday, the 27th. It was given to him on Saturday, 27th, a couple of weeks ago. And they've actually accepted the declaration from the foundation. So hopefully we're going to see, America is going to see a lot of changes. That means that there's only two countries in the world which are sovereign, which is the kingdom of Mana, which is down near Papua New Guinea, and America, and there's 120 odd other countries who who have expressed an interest in becoming sovereign. So that was a major announcement. Now, obviously, the powers to be and the cabal are going to try and slow things down. And apparently, uh, Kissinger was in the White House stopping things from moving again. But you know, you can't stop something that's going downhill. It's very hard to stop it. So. Um, Matt, I don't know whether you heard about that, but um, if people want to go over and check it out after this show, you can go over to uh, Thomas Williams' Truth, Honor, Integrity show, and his show is in there where he reads out the declaration which was given to Donald Trump, and they've accepted it. So hopefully 
um, people in the States. I mean, this is major. This is this is major. Um, and uh, this will be the ripples in the pond will go across to other countries and Europe and countries in Europe and Ireland and Switzerland, Germany, the whole lot. And um, hopefully this will be, you know, well, we, 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 the aim of the game is that it's going to be change for the better. And um, so I'll just pass it around if you guys, if have you heard it, if you have heard about it, if not, um, you know, g- give me your opinion on what you think. And I, I'd go off to Matt first because, Matt, you're in the States. Yeah, I've not heard of this. I've not heard of this foundation. Maybe you can fill me in of what this foundation is and who they are, because I am suspect of this type of reporting. Um, you know, I keep my ear close to the ground and I've not heard of this. So maybe you can fill us in on that one. Yeah, I can send you a link and you can have a listen. Now, we've had uh, Thomas as a guest on our show on multiple occasions. And we've known Thomas since about March 2016. And he's uh, he's got very, very good integrity. I have to give him that. Um, and he's been threatened and he's been, um, you know, attacked by people and all that kind of stuff. And, I, you know, there's no, there's no problem being an open-minded skeptic. I totally agree. Let's see what happens. Um, let's see if, um, if you know, what's being declared with the declaration, if changes are made in the States and if that ripple takes on. I mean, proof is in the pudding, right? So let's see what happens. So I'll send you a link to that. But I don't know if you want to pass it around, Detlev or Michael, if you want to jump in and, and give us your feedback or comments on that. Yeah, well, I've heard about it. I've read about it, uh, but I'm, I'm also a little skeptical. But it could happen. Because uh, it's the fact. I mean, the U.S. Uh, at, at least, I mean, the the, the ruling government uh, are always uh, from the U.S. corporation. So they are basically uh, just doing corporate work. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not the republic which is uh, operating uh, from Washington D.C. So that is uh, clear to everybody uh, since uh, since we are, we woke up. So it is very curious. I'm very curious about uh, this matter, and there are many people who are who are aware of the fact, and, and I appreciate uh, any movement in this direction. So that's my point of view for the time being, not knowing. Yeah, well, either. yeah. See, I am really skeptical about this, and I, and I was I've heard this guy before, and I've not been mm, the his his greatest advocate. I, I'll put it that way. Put it nicely, but. When he says uh, the U.S. is a sovereign country, yes, we are. But until we get rid of the Federal Reserve banking system and start nationalizing our monetary system, we still will be slaves to international bankers. So this sovereignty is, idea is, is, to me, nonsensical. Really, it is. Well, the, the Federal Reserve is going to be shut down. The Federal Reserve is no more. The contract with the Federal Reserve was up in 2012 because it was 100 years. So that's gone. And also the... Um, Congress renewed it, though. Who's the... Well, as I say, I, the best thing to do is listen to Thomas's show. He has all the details in the show and he goes into detail with it. So that would be the best thing. And then do your research after that and then see what you think yourself. Um, the, also, the, uh, the inland revenue... Oh, your who's your tax people over in America, Matt? Internal Revenue Service, and they are not a part. They are actually not a part of the government as well, like the Federal Reserve System. They are a mm, uh, armed army of tax collectors. This is what they are, and this is they, right. Um, and, and a lot of the funding in America, the, all the taxes collected are not even for America. It goes to the crown. Yes. And then, um, and then, obviously, it goes to the the, the politicians and private uh, black projects and all that kind of stuff. So only a small percentage of the taxes collected actually goes to the people. Um, so that's apparently all going to change. Apparently, and um, we have the same issue here over in Ireland that um, we've had the uh, tax is tax on your labour is voluntary. And if you look at the history of Ireland you'll understand that white tax is voluntary. It was never put into law. So, and we actually have a document of a speech that was done by the head of the Inland Revenue at the time, a lady called Josephine Feely, who says in the speech three times that the Irish people are taxed by consent. Now, 
if the inland revenue person turns around, the head of the inland revenue turns around and says, we are taxed by consent, I'd like to think that she knows her job. So I'm kind of saying, well, when did I give the government, the Irish government, the consent to tax me? I never agreed to it. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you guys have seen the Aaron Russo Freedom to Fascism sure. the documentary, and you guys can take it from there and jump in. Yeah, well, uh, talking about um, taxes, I mean, uh, over here in um, Switzerland as well as in Germany and Austria as well, um, that's what I know, uh, the tax laws are invalid. So, especially in Germany, the, 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 that what we call Germany is not the German Reich as it used to be, but the German Reich is still, uh, is still there. So, uh, the people who are currently running uh, the German Federal Republic are basically uh, just administrators uh, of uh, the uh, the victors of the last uh, world war so especially they are working for the US for the US government uh, so and, and they never were able to implement a tax law the the tax laws which are still uh, cited here in Germany for instance are from the uh, Hitler's uh, Reich, so from uh, Hitler's empire. And this was absolutely um, invalid because uh, Hitler was uh, beaten and was uh, the Third Reich was actually uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, t terminated, if you want to. But they still proceed uh, to, uh, to, uh, to rule us uh, on that matter like uh, Hitler did. So and that's, you know, so there is no valid law for taxation. The same thing in Switzerland. Switzerland is also not a, a real sovereign uh, nation. It is a corporation. It's uh, it's nothing else. And Austria is the same thing. So they are uh, corporations and not nations. And that's and right. Corporation is not uh, able to um, to get uh, taxes from people. I mean, this is invalid. As a matter of fact, but it's supposed to be um, voluntary for us to pay it's taxes wallet. here in the United States as well. But yeah. try not to pay in your taxes. You'll have IRS agents show up at your door with guns saying, hey, you're, you're, better, you're taking a jail now. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the SWAT team. That's the same thing as, uh, as here. So they are, they're very brutal. Uh, but the taxes are not for the people. The taxes are to pay something else, uh, but not uh, not for us. Yeah, but uh, Michael, what's your what's your point of view? Michael? Well, um, I think taxes are illegal. I mean, it's, it's a free gift. If somebody passes a basket around for some project, some issue, some uh, for a matrix, and uh, is demanding money for that and the style of living for that uh, and for the elite, that is all a, a perfectly liberal free thing. But I mean, they cannot force it from the people. So um, I think that taxation should be abolished completely. I anyhow I think this whole system should be abolished. I don't believe in any in any of this system at all. I think one should completely start a new life, basically go backwards, go backwards to the original time where people were working together with sympathy, um, no contracts, but only on confidence. So that might sound radical, but I think that's the only way of the, the only solution out of this um, hellish infrastructure that we're in. Um, I have, I think uh, this whole system is corrupt, full of evil, and uh, we have to do a radical change. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. What <clears throat> my understanding is about American history is that we are a corporation, like Detlev was mentioning about Germany and Switzerland. Uh, the Act of 1871, Congress created the District of Columbia, but by doing so, they created a corporate version of the United States of America, so that now our original con constitution, uh, which made us a sovereign country, uh, is now a corporation, and that's why you see here in America these outrageous abuses of what we think is our constitutional rights um, because they don't exist. Uh, 
because we have a corporate version of that. And the law system, <clears throat> the legal system, as our friend um, oh, who Charles Irwin would say, is, is unlawful. It's a, it's a legal fiction. So we need to eliminate uh, the act of 1871 to become a sovereign country again and to re-lawfulize our judicial system. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that's why we have to support people like uh, Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Mack, who have the courage to uh, stand against this uh, abuse of, uh, yeah, of, uh, uh, of, the, of the rights of the people. Right, and he'll be talking about that when we get him on. He's a real go-getter, and I'm so glad we were able to schedule him in for today. Yeah, but, you know, there are many people who, also here in Europe, who think that uh, Donald Trump is, um, is the savior of, uh, of many issues, at least. Um, but also there's criticism uh, about uh, Donald Trump because Donald Trump has uh, made a few good things for America, for Americans. But we don't see any change in, in terms of, uh, you know, conquering the world, it's still going on. I mean, Far East, uh, World War uh, Three is, uh, is blinking, and, um, or the Middle East, or the, um, uh, the build-up of military forces against Russia. Uh, this is uh, ongoing. There has not been really a change. In, on the contrary, I mean, if you look at Syria, for instance, I mean, uh, U.S. forces together with Israeli forces, um, they are attacking uh, Syria, uh, you know, without any any reason. So it is a, a little bit, uh, um, you know, worrying uh, to see that Donald Trump has not really brought any any change in terms of worldwide uh, developments yet. And also, I learned that he has um, had a, a Jesuit. Uh, Uh, education. So there's another hint that uh, he might just be another one of them. Um, who, and there, there's no relief coming from Donald Trump for at least for, for the world. W what are your uh, thoughts about it? You know, I, I'm in agreement with you. Um, domestically, he's done a great job. Uh, he's really stirred up the hornet's nest about this immigration policy of trying to lock down our borders. So that's a good thing. We have a, a, a civil war going on about that. Uh, hopefully we can win that one. He's cut taxes. Uh, you know, he was able to get that tax cut passed. And I personally saw in my paycheck yesterday a good chunk of change uh, that was going to taxes to, that went back into my paycheck. So that was nice. He took us out of the TPP, which would have been a a major blow to the U.S. economy. He took us out of the P Paris Climate Change Agreement, which would have been a blow to our economy. But I am um, uh, dissatisfied with his world politics, especially in Syria, where we don't belong, and we're now attacking, openly attacking Syrian forces with Israeli support. And uh, did, did you guys see the Olympics uh, opening ceremony last night? No, I didn't. I, 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 I was so encouraged by that because the, the, the two Koreas have a unified team and they have athletes sharing uh, uh, act, activities like the uh, hockey team. They have athletes from North and South Korea. And it really looks to me like the Koreans want to unify like Germany did. Um, and, and I think that would be a great thing for humanity because if they do that, then it takes away our uh, the United States uh, war cry against the North Koreans. Now, North Korea is, is only building nuclear weapons as a deterrent to attack because the United States has a habit of invading countries uh, that don't have nuclear weapons. So, you know, that's why they're building it. So, and I think what this is what's going to happen is that if the, um, the Koreas want unification, we're going to see a false flag attack blamed on the North Koreans so we can continue this war agenda. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, uh, if they do that, then we'll, the Koreans will pull in China, so we'll have to go to war with China, and we're building up uh, forces in NATO around Russia so that we prevent Russians from, from attacking, uh, or we can go into Russia, 
from attacking Europe. So I don't know. I, I'm discouraged with Donald Trump's uh, world policies and global policies, but I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful that the uh, Koreans can can unify and somehow prevent the U.S. from starting World War Three via North Korea. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, what are you thinking, uh, Alan? Um, I don't think there's going to be any war. Um, and again, I don't think it's the U.S. I think it's a faction. I think it's a faction war. What we've been told again is just five factions and they're fighting between each other. Um, and maybe Trump, you know, locally he's done a few things which is good, but maybe he there is a level of control over Trump by one of the factions. Maybe the Jes Jesuit side, maybe. And, um, you know, if his life has been threatened and his, his family, his family's life has been threatened, he has to be careful as well and maybe do things in stages bit by bit. Um, North Korea, um, I think that's just, um, you know, uh, bravado. You know, um, I don't think anything's going to come over, over there. Um, I think it will change down the line. Um, the faction fighting... Um, if you remember the Panama Papers 1 and 2, apparently we were told that that was one faction um, exposing another faction. And there's a lot of infighting going on at the moment because the collateral accounts or the world accounts where all the money is have been locked down. Um, they don't have any access of money. That's why they're getting desperate. They've been trying to close, shut down or crash the financial system. The idea being that they, they crash the financial system and they come up with a solution, problem, reaction, solution, and they come up with another, another solution, another Babylonian monetary system, and then we're off again. Well, that has to stop. Um, so um, I think uh, so. The, the whole crashing of the banking system have, has apparently been uh, thwarted uh, on a number of occasions. But, yeah, I can't see. I mean, if North Korea and South Korea get together as a country, I mean, Man creates the borders. There's no borders there. The borders are in our minds and what we're being told and programmed. I mean, there's no such thing as borders. And uh, one of the the people who are going to be getting on to OIM in the next few weeks is um, I don't know whether you guys have heard about the World Passport. And the World Passport is something that you can get, and you say you're a citizen of the world. And there's a number of countries that do accept the World Passport that yeah, you don't actually need a passport. Um, so that's just kind of, you know, I, I don't know, like anything, you know, we all, we, we get information from other people and, and guests that we have in our show. We could be right, we could be wrong. We just have to see what's going on and what's going to happen. Um, if if there is going to be an attack and war, I, it's, I don't think it's going to be the states. I think it's going to be the factions. It's going to be the cabal doing what they're doing because you know how much money is made out of war. I mean, they've been doing this since World War One. You know, the, the Federation... The, um, sh I should say the, the Fed got together in 1913, and in 1914 we had World War I. Let's make loads of money. The Carlyle Group is a defense contractor, and we've been having war ever since. So war makes money. Absolutely. Well, the Rothschilds did that back in the Napoleonic Wars. Mm. Uh, they funded both sides mm. uh, and, 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 and uh, instigated it from both yeah. sides, and they made tons of money, and that's how they became so rich and powerful. Exactly. Well, by the way, when you mentioned Rothschild, uh, I just um, got the information that uh, the uh, Austrian uh, Rothschild family um, are selling their family property uh, in the woods, you know, that's a, a fancy uh, um, area which belonged to the family, um, uh, I think, 143 years. And it's worth, uh, uh, I mean, it's 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 huge area, like uh, Manhattan. Uh, if if you can imagine, and with fancy places on there and so forth for the, uh, you know, for for their uh, entertainment, so they are selling this property after 143 years for just 90 million, nine o million. Why would so they do that? That's ridiculous, isn't it? Um. Well, what? I have I have one theory. If you want to hear it, yeah. The theory is is that they've no money. They've no money. That's why they're selling it. They you know they 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 people think that the Rothschilds are loads of money, but they've been doing double accounting. Uh, we we've been told they've been doing double accounting. The, the money doesn't exist. 
they've been, you know, faking it for ages. And even all these people that are in hock to them, or I won't say in hock to them, but people that they owe money to, um, doing all the dinars and the dongs and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's all, they are, they lied. They're not going to get paid. So the, the Rothschilds don't have any money. Um, it's been, um, it's all been shut down and taken away from them. That's why they're selling their property because they don't have any. I, I find that hard to believe. That's that's one I'm having a hard time following, Alan. Yeah, no, that's okay. Look, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we all have different intel and we all have it coming from different sides. You know, sure. and, and we, that's why we things, have this discussion. And, and this is why we're here today talking about it and we're putting it out there. And that could be wrong, it could be right, it's just what we've been told. But let you know, you know, um if you think about it, why why do people sell the personal stuff a lot of the time? Because maybe they need money because they don't have any. Now, I'm not saying that's the case with Rothschilds. It's, that's what we've been told. But, I, you know, it follows logic for me, unless there's another reason why they're selling, you know, uh, their land, which they've had for 140 years. It doesn't make sense. You know, Michael. if you own half the world, maybe, you know, 140 acres is just something to get rid of. You know, you're cleaning out your clauses well i don't wear that shirt anymore let's donate that to goodwill <laughs> yeah it's just mm -hmm. an example which i which came across but uh, michael what's your what's your point of view well i think the the, the rothschilds have the patent of making the money the, uh, the they can do it they can create as much money as they want to basically i think there might be another story behind why they sell this land it might be a practical reason uh, uh, also because they might give the impression that they don't have any money, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They they can mislead, so it, they can misguide through the, those kind of activities. I'm not sure. I, I cannot tell you the, the solution uh, to this thing, but that they are, are short of money, that's for me kind of hard to uh, to believe. Um, so yeah, I, When you I, can I, create I, it out of nothingness, well, <laughs> you, you got all the money in the world. Well, another... Yeah. Another idea would, would be, I mean, that they are fearing the invasion of uh, foreigners, migration, uh, which will come across uh, Austria, or they are uh, preparing for the war uh, which is coming from Russia or from wherever. Uh, so that that could be a reason to get rid of the, uh, this area and to flee Austria, possibly. Well, we don't know. Uh, it's just a, a minor issue, uh, basically, but it's a hint that something is changing. I mean, how would you sell something which has been in your possession for over 140 years? I mean, it's hard to believe. But anyway. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe, Detlev, maybe, you know, it's easy to turn around and we can say that other watchers have money, but that's just an assumption. You know, I mean, everything we're speculating and we're making an assumption that because we know Rothschilds and Rockefellers is all about money and they have the ability to create money. Well, do they? I mean, yes, they did. But has has things changed now recently where they don't have the money and they can't make money? I mean, we don't want to make any assumptions and just think that it's the same, you know, it's the same thing that's been going on and on and on. I mean, maybe changes have taken place where they're in a situation now where they do have to sell it for that reason. I'm just saying, as I say, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying, let's keep an open mind, guys. You know, maybe things have changed and we're making the assumption that they still have money and they can, you know, print money, but maybe they can't. And that's why they're doing it. So, again, keep an open mind. <clears throat> yeah, that's a point there, uh, Alan. I think that's correct what you say. But um, well, I think that... Um, <sighs> Uh, what they might do and what the, what the real plans are, maybe there is a fraction and a war going on between fractions of the cabal. And uh, maybe a fraction of the cabal has other, other plans or the power is being passed over to another fraction. Uh, we simply can tell, cannot tell because we're not inside, you know. Exactly. And, um, you know, there's, there is intel out there and people talking about it. Um, but again, you kind of keep an open mind and, and listen to what's being said by guests and stuff like that. And then, and, you know, have a think about it and, and logically have a think about it. But we, do, we, we don't know for sure. And we probably will never know because we're not in there. We don't know what's going on. But, you know, you have to apply Occam Ray's theory where you take the most probable. 
And, you know, if they're selling stuff they don't need to sell that you've had for 140 years, well, that kind of raises a kind of question mark as to why would you sell your personal jewellery, which land would be for them, because you can't create land. Land is land. Right. It's there. And, um, and they're selling it. So, you know, again, it's just one of these things and one of these conundrums that we can have a think about. You yeah, can speculate yeah. about it, but you know, like I was like like I was saying, when you own the bank, you you you, <laughs> you can create money out of nothingness. So you, yeah, you but know. again, again, Matt, do do they own the bank now? Have things changed where they don't own the bank anymore? Um, I've not heard anything to that effect. That you know, the banking system has somehow changed hands or yeah. changed structure. Yeah, I've well, it's just that, that. We, we've heard that there has been changes, and that's why they're in the situation they're in. Now, is it true? I don't know, but we have heard from Intel Inside that there has been changes going on. So, again, keep an open mind. I, you know, I mean, it's just we can't make assumptions, um, you know, based on what has gone on historically with the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. So, maybe there are changes. Maybe Trump. And maybe his team or other people in the background, things are going on that we're not aware of because there are, there is stuff going on that won't be on the internet that you can Google all day and you won't find it. There's stuff going on that isn't on the internet. Sure. And, the only way, about- and the only way you'll find out is to by speaking to somebody who might have some inside information. Um, so again, it, it's all about kind of keeping an open mind and not making assumptions and saying, okay, well, that's interesting. Okay, I'll entertain that thought. I won't, I won't believe it, but I want to see the facts. And if you can show me the facts, then okay, then I, I can, I'll believe it, you know? That's fine with me. And, you know, I think um, Leo Zagami might be a good insight into what's really going on behind the scenes. He's a grandmaster of an Illuminati order, and uh, he suggests that his books, written in, in uh, Italian there, um, help take down... Pope Ratzinger, uh, he's an insider. Uh, if there ever was one, then maybe we can try to get him on. Ask him. Well, I can. I can contact Leo. Actually, sent uh, a copy of his latest book to me, and I actually have it for reading. And uh, the plan of attack is for me to read his book and then get him on the show. Now yeah. I have started reading his book, but it's it's so detailed. It's, you know, you're really going all over the place. There's so much detail in his book. But I felt that I needed to read his three other books to understand this book. (laughs) Because it's just, it's so, there's so many, you know, groups in a group, in a group. And there's so much of this stuff going on. But yeah, I mean, why not? Let's see if we can get Leo. I can contact Leo and see if we can get him on maybe and have a chat with him. Yeah, I liked talking to him. He you know, he's not afraid of uh, mentioning names, times, and places. He is an insider if there is one, and then I think we would have better intel from him. Now, guys, what, what are you thinking about uh, the financial uh, crash uh, kind of thing which is happening? I mean, I stumbled upon the Drudge um, uh, report on 666. Uh, the Dow Jones went down 666 points. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what is behind that is this just a show for the time being or is this uh, the real beginning of uh, the changes in the financial system what's your point of view uh, my we- est- yeah my estimation is that they, they brought that stock market up and it it's you know into record territory and what we're seeing now is I think profit taking personally that's what I think we're happening now if it continues to drop 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 then you know it's could be the intentional crash um, Mm -hmm. by the powers that be. But from what I'm seeing is is that people just are are selling off stocks that they bought low because now they're highly valued and putting that, you know, back in their pockets. Yeah. Could also too early to tell though. Too early to tell really. To the, to the Rothschilds that they wanted to uh, cash in. uh, I need, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, and, and the same thing is with Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin was also, uh, you know, uh, in, in the highest tunes. And then, um, you know, immediately uh, or suddenly, better to say, suddenly uh, it crashed on. So it is another bubble. A little bit, but another bubble. Like the dot com, yeah, like the dot com bubble. Um, you know, we saw that one coming. The housing yeah. bubble, we saw that one coming. You know, the stock market was a bubble because there's really no, no 
um, nothing behind the investment. You're investing in these companies, hoping they turn a profit. Well, you know, if, if, if there's no profitability in those countries, you're just creating an artificial bubble. And I'm thinking this is what we're seeing is, is um, you know, just profit taking. People just taking that investment money back in their wallets. I think so. We'll I, have to, I have to agree with Matt there. Um, just jump in there about the stock market. That's obviously being manipulated. Reason being, because Matt knows all these stores are shutting down. Walmart um, and a number of all these stores are shutting down branches all over the place. So how can the stock market be high up when all these stores are shutting down? So it must be the bubble. It must, they must be you know, manipulating it. Um, so when Donald Trump comes and says, oh, yeah, the stock market is going really up. Well, I mean, Matt will tell you all the all the companies that are shutting down branches left, right and center. Over here in the UK, in Ireland, do we, uh, in, in the UK, there's a company called Carillion, which is a construction company. And they're in debt for something like one billion. And they've been linked to so many different contracts. There's even contracts over here in Ireland that have been shut down. There's a, a school that has been built down the road, not far from me. And everybody's gone. Everybody's gone off site. Everything's literally closed down because of this Carillion. But all the directors, oh, they got all the bonuses. But all the companies and the staff who are working for Carillion, now either companies are going to go bang because they're going to be creditors who won't get paid, or staff who are working for them who've just been let off. A week's notice, that's it. Bang, you're gone. So it's, um, it's, uh, there's a lot... Um, there's a lot going on, and um, so I don't. As Matt said, it's a it's a bubble, uh, because all these cl- all these uh, companies closing down. It just it doesn't make sense. Well, what is about the pedophilia issue? I mean, the uh, pizza gate, pedo gate, what have you? I mean, lots of um, top managers uh, resigned recently uh, um, from banks, from from big corporations, and so forth. Um, they might be involved, even some uh, politicians. So what is behind this uh, pizza gate, pedo gate um, development, um, the revelations about that? Uh, wh- what is your opinion? Um, Do you want to... No. Oh, okay, yeah, well, um, I think pedophilia is disgusting. Uh, but if you look at the, you look at what's going on, in order to get to the upper levels of politics or capitalism, uh, it seems that you have to be corruptible and corrupted and blackmailable. And you have to participate in these activities that um, most people find disgusting. And pedophilia is probably used as that mechanism to control people and to allow, once they know that you're corruptible like that, then they allow you into the hierarchy of these um, organizations. You look at, um, for example, um, what was I thinking? Uh, the Congress. Uh, when, when, when the freshman congressmen get to Washington, they're immediately taken to Israel. And Israel is well known for having uh, child sex rings and sex slaves. And it's my guess, and this is only a guess, is that these freshman congressmen are taken to Israel and either filmed being with children or um, having sex with children, and then that makes them blackmailable, and then they pledge their fealty to Israel um, in order to maintain their control. And uh, I think we saw hints of that when uh, Ron Paul said he went to, to Israel, and they tried to hook him up with some male prostitute. So, I don't know. I, I think it's just is their way of controlling the people at the top so that they play along um, So because they don't want to be outed as pedophiles, my estimation. Well, I think that's, um, that's only one aspect. That's the practical aspect of it. But it, there is also another aspect that is feeding the beast. Um you know, um, these practices have been going on for centuries, for thousands of years. And they do this because they want to align and give energy to these dark forces. You know, however you want to call them, or Adiman or Lucifer, they're two different beings, or the Zuras or Sorath. 
And uh, if you write down the, the word sorat in he Hebrew language, um, then and you have to go backwards, of course, then it comes out the figure of 666. When you write it with Kabbalistic, uh, you know, you assign every uh, value to the uh, to the Hebrew alphabet. Then when you spell the, 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 the sun demon sorat, it comes out 666. And the reason why these people do it, because then they get assistance from these negative forces, but over in the upper echelon only, not the lower, the lower grades, so to speak, but the higher grades, they get um, connections to these forces and they get sort of intuitive knowledge what to do and how to fool the people and what to do next. So for them, it's access to a guideline what to do. Uh, in order to, uh, you know, to uh, make people slaves or to rule over people. I think you're right. I mean, I've heard that before, and there might be something to that. I, I've heard of a lot of other people like David Icke say that, you know, they feed off this negative energy to provide themselves with more power. Uh, or you look at um, Alex Jones's work with the uh, Bohemian Grove, he went and filmed that. They, if they believe it, You know, then that's what it means to them. That doesn't mean it's true, but if they believe it, that's why they do it. Oh well, the fact is that they uh, they have a very uh, they have a very close connection to these things, and they know that mechanic works. You know, we got talked into materialism where these things don't count. I mean, we've been talked to be agnostics, but I mean, uh, when you a little bit become sensitive that you know the spirit world exists, every thought is a reality. And with your thought, you create a reality as well. So your thought count, your thoughts count, your feelings count, and your actions count because you create a cosmos out of that. It's substance where the God forces are working a reality. And when you become aware of it, then you'll be careful what you think. And when you think about things like horror movies and things like this, they create a reality. So we are human beings. We are shaped in the image of God. And God is creating reality through thoughts, through thought life. So if God thinks hot iron, there is hot iron. Now, if I think hot iron and I have this consciousness, I'd be careful because I can burn myself. So um, these are aspects which we have to take into account. So it goes way into the occult. And these people have a very, I mean, you cannot fool them. They, they have contact to these negative d d demonic forces. And when you get close to them, you can feel it. Yeah. Well, we have a question here from the chat room. Um, I put it in here. Um, and on top of the hour, we are going into a musical break, um, just for your information. Uh, this is by Yarlov. Um, yes. Um, has any of you ever uh, read that, what the Jesuits swear uh, to? This is disgusting because they believe and pray to Satan. I mean, Alistair Crowley and Albert Pike should be known to you by now. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is common knowledge uh, amongst you, or what is your point of view? Uh, Matt. Well, I, I've read about the Jesuits. I'm not convinced that they're the ones in control of the world. Uh, they might have their own agenda. Um, but... Mm, They may have influence within our, you know, upper echelons of government and society, but I, I don't know that they're the ones in control. Alan? Well, just on the topic that you were talking there about the Peter guy, um, I think uh, what Michael said as well is very important, that, you know, we're all energy. And a common mistake that people forget about, if you're not familiar with the spiritual side and the energy, is the the negative attacks that you can suffer from. I've been psychically attacked, uh, so I know what it feels like. Um, and people have to be aware that you have to have your own protection. You have to know how to protect yourself um, energetically, um, not just physically. Um, because people will negatively, negatively attack you, even if they don't know they're doing it. I mean, you have energy vampires out there who will suck your energy. So you have to be aware of this stuff. And a lot of people aren't. They're very naive toward, towards that and don't understand it. Now, the whole Peter Gate thing is, again, about taking energy and control. To climb the ladder, as what Matt said, you have to uh, be corruptible. 
Um, there is five five things that they look for to corrupt you, and I can remember four of them, and maybe one of you guys can remember the fifth one. But it's uh, there's money, sex, religion, and politics, and there is a fifth one as well, um, which they use. They will look at you and they'll say, right, this uh, everybody has a certain level of integrity. What is the value of your integrity? How much is it for you to do the Judas and put your t- integrity to one side? Um, is it worth two million, five million, ten million? Um, and if you have good integrity, then what they do is they'll uh, get you drunk, stick you in a bedroom, throw in, you know, put, put in, send in a couple of kids, and then take a few photos, and there's the blackmail. Yeah. Um, and we know they do it because they've done it before on a number of people for control, and that's how they do it. You don't get to the top unless you are controlled or manipulated. Um, and it's about energy as well. I mean, Credo Motwa, who was interviewed by David Icke, who's a Zulu um, chief, was talking about, you know, they love uh, the boys under the age of 10 um, because uh, they take their energy uh, by abusing the kids. Yeah. Um, and when they, and this, like, youth energy. Now, we've talked about, I've mentioned before on the show about the, the Kool-Aid. And um, people thought, you know, you, we were mad when we mentioned about the blood uh, being, you know, uh, in the Kool-Aid to keep people young. Well, I only seen an advertisement in America of a company actually selling um, blood from young people for people to keep them young. They're yeah. actually doing it. Now, they're actually blatantly advertising it that they can people can take young blood and put it in them um, to keep them young. And this is what the elites were doing for centuries. You know, it, it's the Kool-Aid, drinking I've the heard blood. That. I've heard yeah. that, yeah. So keep, your, keep your thoughts. We're going into a break. We're now on top of the hour. Uh, which will um, um, give us uh, four minutes, and then we are back um, with live show and live discussion. So stay tuned. United we start. We explore the new world order, finance, science, health, and other subjects in our group discussions of activists, bloggers, authors, and other leaders in the independent media to inform and educate listeners on various topics. Join us the second Saturday of the month at 10 to 12 a.m. Pacific Time, 18 to 20 hours GMT. Looking forward to meeting you.